Would you like to join us on the panel and we'll take uh, questions uh, for everyone? Can I answer that? Maybe? Yes, of course. Is it on? Is this on? Yes, it's on. Okay. Um, open source, I think a lot of people misunderstand what open source is. I certainly did. I just thought a minute it was free. But actually it means that you can see what is behind the, the software. So you can make adjustments to it. So it means it's very flexible. So if you give it to somebody else, they can change it to what they want. So this is why we, we like it. And when I said it's open source and other, we hope other people can use it, we would give them the programming, if you like, that we've done, and then they can go and do what they want with it. But uh, Bamni is the platform that was, is, is based on open MRIs system. Um, and in terms of ownership of the data, yeah, the data never goes to the software developer and the data is, 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 in the, in, is ours. Our exports are, are anonymised and we don't use the cloud. So other organisations do use the cloud to allow data entry at remote sites, whereas we, we don't that. We do data entry at a central site. But that's something that we want to work on and develop is to be able to enter data at two different sites and synchronise that data, because that is a need. <coughs> Good, okay. A question then, La lady in the pink jumper. Uh, hello, it's uh, um, Marseille from MSF. It's a question for Mohima. Is the, the, um, does this uh, tool um, allow the nurses to plan activities? I mean, can they uh, plan interventions? or just is a data collection tool? Like, like the roster? Yeah, okay, I say again. The thing is that the, the tool, I mean the, the, the EMR you, you, you present, um, I would like to know if the nurses can uh, plan interventions on the patients, or it's just a tool that you collect the data that is in, in a already defined uh, grill of interventions that is already is, is standardized. Is it a clinical support tool or just a data collection tool? Yeah, does it like kind of make rosters for the nurses or decide, you know, when they're going to do stuff? No. There's interventions like health interventions or say I want to plan that a patient is going to have a dressing or they need twice daily dressings and so on. Um, yes, for, for the release that's upcoming in the beginning of June, they'll be able to first record exactly what intervention they performed on the patient and then plan for the next intervention. So this is still in the planning processes, but it's not, at this point, it's not functioning simply as a data entry or a data collection tool. It's really to support uh, the clinicians and provide them feedback on how they're managing the cases. Good. Uh, the, the lady in the black jumper. Yes. Hello, thank you. Maria, Maria Jose Sagrado from MSF Spain. Thank you very much for the amazing panel to all the presenters. Uh, I, just ha I have a question regarding the EMR. Um, it's, uh, what is, uh, we are talking, we are hearing about EMRs and implementation in the whole movement. So I want to know what is your opinion of um, full implementations of EMR in the different contexts that we have and what is the cost of the implementation of, of the, this EMR that you have, uh, this wonderful setting in, in Jordan and what is your opinion in terms of uh, expand these EMRs in, in, the whole mo in the different hospitals that we are carrying out? Okay. So in, in terms of um, maybe translating the lessons learned, you can see that there are similar lessons uh, between the NTB and the, the Amman implementation. But for Amman, it's really a specific hospital. We're not a simple OPD, IPD um, uh, project. So the patients are staying a long time. The implementation is quite extended at this point, so I can't give you like conclusions on what will happen at the end of the implementation. Right now we are receiving very positive feedback from the clinical staff and surprisingly for the initial assessments we're going to, we've moved to a point of care data entry which is normally very difficult to do in certain situations. Um, so in terms of costs, in uh, for 
the, the cost of the project is not completely owned by Amman Hospital, as most of these features were taking the responsibility of developing can be transferred to other implementations. For example, the OT list, even in a unique setting most of the time, and OT list is generated in a similar fashion. Same with doing OPD scheduling and so on. So um, if you want more information on the costs, you can talk with the eHealth unit. <laughs> A difficult one. It's like a measuring a, the length of a piece of string, isn't it? The cost of these projects uh, for their sustainability as well as their adoption. Uh, there's some more questions here. One at the front here. Pete, was it? Uh, for Clotilde, it might be a bit of a strange question. So I was told at an innovation and health conference that I would have nanobots in my blood that would communicate with my virtual physician in my laptop, which would refer me to my doctorless hospital. Um, I know you're not doing that, but you are <laughs> <laughs> moving clinical decisions maybe away from clinicians. And one of the big discussions was about refocusing, managing a change in focus from clinicians to technicians. And I wondered if that was a conversation that had been started in MSF Switzerland. Yeah, I, I thank you for this question. Um, I think this is something that often comes, like, is it now the tablet that is treating the patient? And this is even a question that was raised in the field. Like someone told us that the, 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 the community were thinking that there was a magic system that was now treating the patient. And this is something very frightening for us. And this is for something uh, that actually, when you actually work in this project, you realize that you still need uh, and I would not say a doctor because we don't have doctors. Uh, and that's why we are here and what we discuss about are we doing a bandage? Uh, of course, it would be great to have medical doctors everywhere. And we are just trying to, um, yeah, to help these people that have no training, that have limited support to get a better decision. But still, they need this clinical knowledge because we are just helping them to, to decide when they should look for signs of symptoms, but they are the one assessing it. And so it is not working in itself. And again, we, we pay attention when designing the tool so that it helps them to understand the steps they are taking. We do not ask them to answer question only, and then we crush the treatment uh, or diagnosis. We drive them through a process, and we have put a lot of efforts to do, I mean, to, to keep the paper format, which is not easy to make it like look nice or <laughs> being uh, understandable, but it's a huge for us, uh, um, uh, I mean, objective that we, we, we have the support to explain them where we are. So that's how it just turned it, this into more training tool than uh, in a tool that is treating the patient. So, but this, like the perception of the community, is something that now we are working on and we want to, to understand better how they received it and maybe how we can improve the communication we have with them to remind them that it is not the tablet, it is the clinician and the mother or the caretaker who are really treating the patient. Excellent. Uh, good answer there. A question. Alexandra, MSF Denmark uh, for Clotilde. Can I ask you if uh, newborns were included in your algorithm? And also, do you know the explanation for why the consumption of antibiotics was less? Was it due to more correct dosage calculation or was it less children being treated? And if so, do you know if the consumption of other drugs went up while antibiotics went down? And then just, uh, I'm very, uh, and, uh, and I guess that the prescription for less children had antibiotics prescribed. And I'm very impressed um, that both um, caretakers and staff um, embraced it because being a clinician in an outpatient clinic in Denmark can be difficult to explain why not everybody needs antibiotics after two minutes of fever? Mm -hmm. So I'll try to answer the three questions. I think there were three questions. <laughs> So, so, so for the for the um, now currently we have a tool that covers the patient from two months to uh, to five years. So we haven't yet designed the one from the neonates. Uh, this is planned. That I mean, what we saw in Barbarati is that the the clinician were so happy to use the tool that they began to use it for the under two months, which is worrying for us because then they do not do what they w should be doing for this children. So. One of the, our first uh, step for us, like if we want to extend the scope, is to cover this uh, this age group, and there is a work currently ongoing with WHO, UNICEF.
UNICEF and MSF trying to better state what this patient should be, uh, I mean, how she should be uh, considered and treated. So this we will try to address. With regard to the, the, the drugs, um, I'm not sure what you, I have understood your question. The data I, sh I showed is the proportion of the consultation where an antibiotic were prescribed. So it is not a volume of antibiotic consumption, it's really the proportion of the consultation where the children received uh, a prescription of antibiotics. And then, yes, I mean, I, I, as you, I, I am really surprised of the data we have now. Uh, how do the clinician really embrace I mean, that they follow this? So what we still need to understand as a limitation of this work is that what we have now is the data that they report. What is reassuring for me is that they report the same in the application and in the consultation register. But this is also something that we are trying now to go a bit further and assess further, is that is it really the truth that they are doing? Uh, and we are trying also to, we were trying to cross the information also from the, um, data, the antibiotic consumption data we have from the order they make to the pharmacy. But it's a bit difficult to analyze that because somehow with the data we have for the consultation, it's not the same calendar than the data for the pharmacy, so we cannot cross it. Uh, and also, when you look at the data for 2016, the variation in the reported uh, real consult consumption, it's not about order that they made that they would make differently. Every month, they, they, they tick, I mean, they count what they had tick in the delivery room and they give us what was the, uh, the real consumption. And when you look at antibiotic, it's just like that. So now we have uh, only few data for the, the recent implementation of the tool, and we see that it's like that, and that we are a bit like that, but it's, it can be overlapping, so we can't tell whether it had an impact in the real consumption. That's why I didn't show that uh, here today. Uh, but yes, no, it's, it's part of the, the work that the anthropologist is doing now, is trying to understand the perception also with regard to these uh, new guidelines with regard to antibiotic prescription. Mm, yes, questions of truth and data. There are long-standing challenges in health informatics, and, and we, we heard about some of them this morning with the mapping, didn't we? Um, a, a question from the lady in the purple jumper. Hi, um, my name's Alice, and I'm working in the NHS at the moment. Um, as you probably heard, we've been caught up with this sort of cyber attack thing recently. And I just wondered, with all the new innovations that are much more computer-based, is there any concern about that sort of thing happening and messing up all of the great work that's been put in in patient care and so on? Good question. Who would like to answer? I'm not the right person to answer. Wants to tackle that one. Don't, don't you have to be connected to the internet to be attacked by a cyber attack? I don't know. Oh, that's a good point. Uh, Anyone like to tackle that? I mean, it's a challenge, I think, for everyone. Uh, and it's a global threat. And uh, we're, we're, yeah, the solutions are, don't ask we don't doctor. really know what they are, do we? <laughs> <laughs> There's experts in the audience. Is, oh, there's an expert in the audience. Would you like to volunteer an answer? Eric. Eric? <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Nothing right, like audience participation. Hey, is this on? Mm. Yeah, I'm familiar with you. I'm familiar with the architecture of OpenMRS. You actually don't even need to be close to connected to the internet to get hacked. Um, any pen drive, any disk, anything you touch, any laptop that goes on your network. So I mean, I think as you're rolling this out, just just do a review of the architecture. Also, having your own servers, you know that that helps. But I wouldn't want to alarm people. I would just say that you know have a good defense posture, and we can help with that together. Yeah, just to, to mention, I mean, this is something that, uh, I mean, we know that we want to more and more uh, make use of the data we collect because we, uh, I mean, still we really well defining the purpose where we use the data and, and but we, we do perceive that if we were able to collect more data, we would be able to design better decision support tools and understand better what is the quality of care that we actually give and what is the outcome and, uh, and that's what we want to do, like designing decision support that would help improve the outcome of the patient. So that's key problem and we know that in this, this world, I mean, we need to make sure we have appropriate data protection measures from the initial design of our project to, the, to then everything that is around that. So uh, we, we go carefully on that topic because we know that there is a lot of, of uh, ethical uh, and, and, and risk that we, we, we could take into that, but uh, we need to find ways to 
appropriately and safely go in that direction, I think. Good. Well, we, we're, we're out of time, sadly, uh, but we'll maybe pick your brains about that later. Uh, Eric, thank you. Um, uh, big challenges that are not just technical, of course, human, and, and these systems are, uh, uh, and I'm talking system as in uh, uh, MSF <laughs> and other health systems are full of people, and the people are, are really where, where the trust and the, and the, uh, the dependability uh, lies. Um, so that was an excellent, we'll have to wrap up there, but thank you very much to all the speakers for some great projects. <laughs>